I'm Claire Cousins and in this episode I'm going to be looking at how to use Angelina fibres. Um, I've used them in projects before and you can stitch them in. And here's an example of one of my pages and you can just see it's very very lightly embossed. So I'm going to hopefully show you how that's achieved in this video. So come to my workbench and see what you think. Okay, what I've got here is a selection of Angelina fibres of different colours and from different companies. I've got lots of different colours going on. I've also got Colour Crafts uh, foil as well. I've got some of that. I've got some sequins. I've got some organza. I've got some rubber wooden stamps. I've got rubber stamps. I've got some ink pads to hand as well and I'm going to show you a combination of different techniques so let me just go through them firstly you can just produce a very simple web like this and that's very easy to create all you do is you get your Angelina fibres and you can blend them you'll notice I've got some paper on my ironing mat you can blend them if you so choose, I've got different thicknesses, you can chop them up. So I'm just going to just do a very simple layering of colours. I find this, some of them are quite coarse and some of them are very fine. So when you pick some up, do check how coarse they are. If you have a look at this one, you can see that it's so much coarser. And you, you might like it scattered in. I'm tempted not to bother because that's, I think that's too heavy for this particular piece that I'm ironing. I've got a few bits stuck in there now, but never mind. And then you get another piece of baking parchment, greaseproof paper, anything like that. And you can iron it then with your iron. Now I've got this set at silk at the moment, and I've quickly ironed that. And you can see that already that has set. Now that's a very fine if you can see a very fine web. Now you can choose to iron it, fold it together and intensify the colours if you want to do that. So I'll just show you that. So I folded it. I'll just fold that a little bit better. Hopefully you can see that's intensified the colours. So that's just making a web. Now you can trap other colours, other bits and bobs into it. So let me go through how you might achieve that. So I'm going to lay the same webs down very lightly. So I've got a very thin layer there. combination of two but if you can see that hopefully you can see that now this time I'm going to cut in another piece of Angelina that I've already ironed and I'm just going to use my pinking shears I think to cut that up over on this side and I could lay them into a pattern or a design can be creative as you like. You can just cut them into little triangles, little circles, um, do whatever you like. And just, as I say, playing around with some, with a bit of a stripe going on there. Okay, and then I'm going to put another layer of these on the top. Again, a very thin layer, just to trap them in. You can incorporate sequins, but I'll do one with sequins in a minute. And then I'm going to line that. And 
you can see they're all entrapped in. So that's doing that. Okay, let's get some. Well, I don't think I'll use that. I think I'll use some of the blue this time. I'm going to put some blue down very lightly. Might mix it up with a little bit of. That's what I've got here. Bit of this blue, lighter blue. And then I'm going, I have some sequins here somewhere. Let's see how that works. These are very tiny sequins. I'm just going to scatter some on here. More. Oh, don't want that big one. Don't want that one there. There we go. That should be enough. Really iron them on before without um, popping some on the top to hold them in. So pop some on the top. Hopefully I've put enough on there to hold them in. Iron again. can see. Yeah, they're trapped in there. What I might do is give that another threat. In fact, I'm tempted now to add some more gansas behind the back of it. So what I could do oops, is cut some more gansas onto the back like that. A bit more. Quite like the pink. Now this time, I could put another layer of the um, fibres over it, but I think this time I'm going to try this film. I'm just placing the film over the top like that. And hopefully that will trap the organza. Let's see what that's done. Oh actually. Yeah, that's nice. And then if you can see that. film on the back which has trapped the organza underneath and then you've still got the uh, sequins on the top surface they, they, they still move a little bit because they're actually trapped between the web and there's a little bit I don't know if you can see that in the camera but it's got a bit of a sheen to it sparkles I'm going to give it one more eye on the top the more you iron it, the duller it gets, so don't, don't be tempted to overheat it. Um, and sometimes it will change colour. In fact, I do believe it's gone a bit more purpley because I've applied more heat. The film has picked up some more. It's changed colour a bit. Let me give it a bit more. I really feel it's full actually you can see I can scrunch it now but if I screw it up it would give me another texture so I'll unravel it now 
give me another texture. And then if I press it again, some of that texture might stay. Might not, we'll see. Let's have a look. It's all about playing and experimenting. Yeah, some of the texture has stayed. So that's quite nice. What you can do is you can cut elements out of this. You could probably put it through your die. If you've got a die machine, you probably put it through your die machine and cut elements out. Um, or you can leave it as a hole and you can stitch into it. You can even trim this up, wrap it round a knitting needle and make beads. So there's a lot. Once you've created this fabric, there's quite a bit you can do with it. So that's a flat piece, that technique. Another technique is actually using stamps. Now I've got a, this is just a regular wooden stamp. You can use rubber stamps. I've also got a rubber stamp here as well. So I'm going to grab one of those. There's a rubber stamp. Uh, this is, oh, it's a starfish. So what I'll do, I'll do that in orange. And you can put ink on there first. So what I might do is I have got a richer, here we go, so I've inked it up with some ink, I'm going to end up with it all on my hands as well, typical, I'm then going to get my web and I'm just going to do a little amount on there like that. I'm going to find my grease proof over the top. Oh, it's moved. Iron that. You can see there's the starfish. Okay, and do the same with the wooden block. This time I'm going to show you what it looks like with black ink. That was coloured ink, but I think my block was a bit dirty and it's picked up some of the old colour. I'll do some with black. It's just a versifying. Um, this time I'm going to do two colours, so I'm going to do a bit of that blue and then a bit of this orange. A bit more of that blue. Make sure it's on the stamp. Put the grease proof paper on it before you move. And then iron it. Do be careful when you're ironing not to catch your hands. And you'll know when you're when it's gone because I think you can just about make out the stamp showing through. What you can do in this point is you might want you might not want these all fluffy. You can fold them in like you did before. And if you're careful without it moving, that's the that's the knack though, isn't it? Without it moving, you can just catch those edges in. It depends whether you how neat you want the edges to be, whether you want to trim them off afterwards. You can see that I'm just gently folding that over. Don't be tempted to pick up the iron though, because it will stick to your iron. You don't put grease proof down.
So there we go. Should we see what it looks like? And that is how it looks. And that I think is rather beautiful and could be stitched on to all sorts of things. It could be part of a centre of a, a brooch, it could be in the middle of a book. Um, you can embroider beads into this. You could do so much, it's, you know, it's really lovely. So I, I think I quite like the, str personally I like the stronger colour and I like the wooden blocks. Um, so let me just show you the rubber stamp. It's there. Whether it's because I used just a single colour, what I might do is quickly show you that rubber stamp again, but do it with black so that you can see if it's any better. I'll get got a crab this time. And use that Versafine. Oops. Get some orange. Might also use that blue again actually, I quite like the blue. There you go, that's how he looks. That's how he looks, he looks pretty good. Again, it's a little bit, I didn't get a chance, I don't know if, we can, if I can reposition him. You might, if you're lucky, you can reposition him. And then you can fold all the end, edges in, like I did on the other one. He's quite cute. So hopefully that's given you an idea of how you might use your stamps with it. And I hope, as I say, it does emboss it. It's got a bit of a relief to it, which is quite nice. So there's that technique. All right, other techniques is you can actually blend these fibres together. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So I've picked up, I've got some, um, okay, that's called Hot Fix Wisteria, that one. This one I'm not sure, I've obviously picked that up from somewhere. It's quite coarse. Um, what else have I got here? This looks like a different blue again. Again, a different thickness, it's coarse as well. And we can actually just blend them. Uh, I'd like to the blue there, shall I introduce a different colour? Oh, a bit of green. Incorporate a bit of green and then this time you might remember that film I had earlier. Here it is. I'm going to cut some just little triangles out of it this time and introduce that into it. introduce some little flecks into it. Now this film, you, I believe you can get it in different colours. Um, that particular one is violet, which is why when it heats up it should have a slight tint of violet to it. Let's see what that does.
Now earlier I had trapped in sequins, but there's nothing, no reason why you can't trap in other fibres or feathers. You can entrap all sorts of bits of fabric. Now I'm not entirely sure you can see that, but there, there is more solid areas of the actual film, which gives a little pop of contrast in colour. What I might do is put it on, I might do it again using the yellow. You might see the contrast better on the yellow. I get bits of, I mix some yellow and orange together to do a mix. Look at that film again. I'll cut some chunks of. Hopefully you can see it on this one. It might be more clear. You can you can see it here, but it's just, as I say on the camera. I suspect it's not that clear. <clears throat> the grease proof on the top. Giving it a quick press. Ah, again, I can see it, but I don't know wh whether you can pick it up on the camera. It's a slightly different sheen, and it gives a slight purpley effect onto an otherwise quite orange-yellow fabric. So there you go. Anyway, that was an introduction to Angelina fibres. I'm sure you'll find lots of other things you can do with it. You can so you can sew with it. You can make beads with it. <clears throat> but thank you for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed this session with me and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye for now.